I surprise traded 500 score bunny. It was a long and grueling task and we're going to talk about it. In this video, I will break down the most commonly surprise traded Pokemon, the most common language, the amount of shinies I received, how many Pokemon had nicknames, the most commonly traded Terra types, how many perfect IV Pokemon I received, the most commonly traded primary types, and the Pokemon region that was most represented in surprise trading. First, why? Why would anyone surprise trade 500 Pokemon for a video? And why score money? Well, Cinderace was a tough raid. I saw countless posts online talking about how much trouble people were having with the Cinderace raid. I did this raid solo, and I won't lie, it was still pretty difficult with only NPCs. Oftentimes, the NPCs would trigger Cinderace's shields and make all of my setup just go to waste. So after completing this raid, I knew what I had to do. I had to get as many score bunny out into the world as possible so that all the struggling trainers wouldn't miss out on an exclusive raid Pokemon. Yes, it was a benevolent act and not at all a stinging curiosity to see what I would get back after 500 trades. First, I made and hatched 500 Pokemon eggs. Well, it was more like 509. All with score bunny in them. And since the 7 star raid Cinderace had 6 perfect IVs, I threw a destiny knot on him to make sure that all of these eggs had a chance at a few perfect IVs. Most of the score bunny I hatched had between 2 and 5 perfect IVs. And I even got lucky and managed to get a couple with 6 perfect IVs. I had a really good mix of the regular ability Blaze and the hidden ability Libero. And despite only hatching 509 eggs, I managed to get 4 shiny score bunny. The first came after 172 eggs, then 324 eggs, 430 eggs, and 438 eggs. I was absolutely stunned when I hatched my fourth shiny only 8 eggs after my third shiny. My luck hatching the score bunny was insane, but the toughest part had still yet to be done. After hatching every score bunny I needed, I started the process of surprise trading. I won't lie, this also took me a few days. It's not a super long process, it's just very tedious, and I can't imagine trading more than a thousand of these like other people have. But after a few days of hatching, and then a few more days of trading, I finally had 509 new Pokemon, and my original 509 score bunny had found a new home in the world with new trainers. But even after this task was complete, the true task was not yet started. I had to analyze the results. What lies in the hearts of the average surprise trader? Are they trading away trusted companions? Random Pokemon they find in the early game? Version exclusives? I had to know, and now you will see my results as well. First, let's discuss the most traded Pokemon. In 509 trades, the one Pokemon that I got back the most was none other than the lovable Fuecoco. This generation's fire starter was sent to me 22 times. The other Pokemon in the top 5 are Sprigatito, Eevee, Charmander, and Sharkadet. I was pleasantly surprised by these Pokemon as I expected to see the starters among the top 5. But Eevee, Charmander, and Charcadet were not very expected. Charmander makes sense as the first 7 star raid was Charizard, but Eevee and Charcadet are a bit out of left field for me. Here you will see the other most traded Pokemon. In this graph is every Pokemon I received with more than 5 trades. Only 17 Pokemon were version exclusives. And of those 17, only 3 Paradox Pokemon were traded to me. An Iron Jugulus, an Iron Hands, and a Brute Bonnet. People really were not trading any exclusives. I was surprised to see that of the 19 Pokemon, 10 came from Pokemon Scarlet. This is because I had a lot of trouble finding Scarlet exclusives when I was finishing my Pokedex. I expected to see way more Violet exclusives 
than what I actually got. Next, let's look at the language. As expected, English was the top language with 272 Pokemon coming from this language. Then, Japanese came in at number 2 with 131 Pokemon. SPEU, which stands for Spanish, was third with only 35 Pokemon coming from the Spanish-speaking region. The least represented was Italian, with only three Pokemon coming from Italy. And this makes me think, we need an Italian region, maybe some DLC. Korean and traditional Chinese only had four Pokemon each, so Italian really was not that far behind. When you surprise trade, you always hope you get something really rare. And there's not much rarer than a shiny Pokemon. I'm happy to say that out of 509 trades, I got back... 6 Shiny Pokemon! Numel, Glimet, Scorbunny, Ditto, and 2 Tinkatink. Out of all these Pokemon, only one was a legit Shiny. And the way I could tell was very simple. Of all the shiny Pokemon received, only one had terrible IVs. The rest were literally perfect. Every other Pokemon was named either Happy New Year or a website for a generated Pokemon, which I will not mention nor promote. The new Mel, it was just kind of normal. There was nothing super special about it except for it being a shiny, which is super special. Some people are absolute word wizards when it comes to nicknaming Pokemon. Me? I like simple names, like Peanut or Birdie. In my trades, I got back 33 Pokemon with nicknames, or about 6% of all Pokemon traded. The best ones are as follows. A Sandaconda named Sandabullock. Big Mac, the Spupa. All caps. Cheddar. The Palmy, a Capsa Kid named Wilbert, Baby Cakes, the Applin, Groose, the Zangoose, and Whoopy the Whooper. Everyone else, no nicknames. They just sent across default Pokemon with no care attached to their name. But then again, I also did that with all 509 Score Bunny. Terra types are new to Pokemon. And while most of the time the Terra type matches the actual primary type of the Pokemon, there were many exceptions. The most common Terra type in the traded Pokemon was Normal, with 70 Pokemon, or about 13.75% of all traded Pokemon. Fire was right behind that with 65 Pokemon, or 12.77%. And then Water and Grass with 9.63%, and 8.64%. On this chart, you can see the most common Terra types, and I'll leave that up for a second in case you're curious what it looks like. The least common Terra type I encountered was Ice, with only 9 Pokemon, or 1.77% of the entire amount traded. Ice is a pretty weak type defensively, so this makes sense in a way. One thing I was really curious about was how many Terra types would match up with the Pokemon's natural typing. Typically, like I said, a Pokemon has the same Terra typing as its primary typing. The biggest exception comes from Pokemon Cotton Raids and certain Pokemon you can catch in the overworld that have different Terra types. You can also change the Terra type yourself, but it takes a lot of Terra Shards to do that, so I'm just not interested in that right now. Looking at the primary typings, the most common types match with the most common Terra types. Normal is the most common type again, with 93 Pokemon and 18.27% of all Pokemon. Fire, Water, and Grass again are the next three highest, with 11.98%, 11%, and 9.04%. The least traded type was Steel, with only 6 Pokemon, or 1.18%. Ice was not much higher with only 9 Pokemon traded. Every other type had at least 14 or more Pokemon traded. This data is telling a lot of stories, and one of my favorite ones has to do with IVs. A Pokemon's IVs are something that it is born with. They can be changed using bottle caps and hyper training, 
But people surprise trading are not doing this. I didn't find a single hyper-trained Pokemon traded to me. They are either keeping the IVs on the random Pokemon they found, or surprise trading eggs they hatched that don't meet the specific qualifications that they're looking for. I received 262 Pokemon without a single perfect IV. Over 50% of the Pokemon received had zero IVs. A perfect 6 IV Pokemon is very rare, and this was reflected in how many I had traded to me. There were only 6 Pokemon that had all 6 IVs perfect. And of these, again, only one was legitimate. A Wooper from a trainer playing in the traditional Chinese language. And the only reason I could see this Pokemon traded is maybe because of its ability. But that's nothing that an ability patch or an ability capsule couldn't fix. Every other 6 IV Pokemon was very obviously generated and put into the game through nefarious methods. Last, let's look at regions. Of all the regions in the Pokemon games, my favorite has always been Johto. Gold and Silver are my favorite games, and they were the first region I ever played. Of all the Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, Pokemon from Johto make up about 9.75% of all Pokemon. I have a handy graph here showing each region in the game and what percentage of all 400 Pokemon come from each region. As you can see, Paldea has the most with 27%, and Alola the least with only 6.25%. I was curious to see how this would be reflected in my surprise trade results. Of the 509 Pokemon traded, Paldea was predictably the most traded region, with 34.38% of Pokemon being from this region. Next was Kanto with 17.88%, and then Galar with 10.02%. The least traded region was the region that was least represented, Alola, with only 4.52%. One big surprise here was Sinnoh. Although Sinnoh Pokemon account for 11.5% of the Pokemon in the game, only 6.09% of Pokemon traded to me were from this region. The fact that I got so many Pokemon from Kanto made me think that there was a disproportionate amount of Kantonian Pokemon in this game. But this is just not the case. It turns out, People just like trading Kanto Pokemon. Even if you take away the top two most traded Kanto Pokemon, Charmander and Eevee, you still have more than 70 Pokemon traded from Kanto. That was 20 more Pokemon than the next highest region. A few more observations before we end this video. There was only one Pokemon with a ribbon traded to me, a Garganackle with one perfect IV that was used to beat the Pokemon League. Additionally, there was a non-shiny Golduck with zero IVs that was caught in a Master Ball. For what reasons, I'm not so sure. Um, it didn't seem particularly outstanding, but maybe the fact that it wasn't special makes it more special. Anyways, these were my findings. Um, if you want to know more about these surprise trades that I did, let me know down in the comments below. What are you looking for specifically? Is there something that I missed? Is there something that you would like to know? Uh, just out of curiosity, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you again so much for watching, and until next time, thank you, and see you later.